thanks so much everybody for being here today. I'm really excited to talk with you about Penderetsky and his works for, for Clarnet. My name is Thiago Anselmo. I'm currently the instructor of Clarnet at the University of Wisconsin, Platteville. I'm a founder member of a new music chamber group called Kemia Ensemble, and I'm finishing my DMA in Clarnet Performance and Pedagogy at the University of Iowa. Uh, I want to thank also all the organizers of the Clarnet Fest for all that work. Uh, I can't imagine the amount of work you have. Anyway, let's start. I'm going to just share my screen. And as Jessica said, if you have any questions, you can send me you can ask at the end of the presentation, you can send me a mail as well. Just a moment. Um, so Christoph Penderecki, uh, I'm going to give you just a short biography of him for those who maybe are not super familiar with his name. Uh, he was born in 1933 in Dabdika in Poland. Um, in 1954, he was admitted at the Krakow Academy of Music. Um, and uh, the big year for him was in 1958 when he just graduated from from the academy, he won like the first three prizes at the League of Polish Composer competition. And that's a special one because this competition was, the submission was anonymous and he submitted three works of him and his three works won this competition. So he immediately gained some attention in Poland. In 1961, he wrote Trinity to the Victims of Hiroshima which won a UNESCO prize at, in Paris. 66, uh, Saint Luc Passion. And these are like big works of him, right? So I'm really going through this really fast. Saint Luc's Passion was also a turn point that really gave him a little more visibility outside Poland and outside Europe as well. In 1977, he wrote a violin concerto, and that's an important one because it's the beginning of a transition for a new composition style, and it will make sense later during the lecture. In 1986, this is when his new composition style is established, and pretty much to the end of his life, he kept the kind of the same and compositional style. He died in March of 29 of 2020, last year, in Krakow, in Poland, after fighting like a long disease. Um, so he wrote many works for clarinet, and some of the original works, all the original works are here. So the first piece was in 1956, the three miniatures for clarinet and piano, very common piece among us. Um, and the second one, this was a piece, by the way, when he was still a student in Krakow. Then Prelude for Clarinet Solo, which I will talk about today. 1993, Quartet for Clarinet and String Trio, very, very beautiful piece, if you don't know it. The Sextet for clarinet, violin, viola, cello, horn, and piano. And the concerto grosso number two for five clarinets and orchestra. Those are the original works. But since this new style, since the 80s, he wrote a lot of transcriptions as well. So in 1994, he wrote the Sinfonietta number no. two for clarinet and string orchestra. And this is just arrangement of the clarinet quartet. Um, in 1994, there's this piece Vivace for bassoon or bass clarinet and rototones, which is a percussion instrument. Then he did a transcription of the viola concerto um, in 1995, a, a transcription of the flute concerto in the 1996. And the most recent piece was in 2018. Uh, he did a transcription of the double concerto for violin and viola for clarinet and flute. So you can see really his prolific 
uh, composer for the clarinet, especially one of the big names of the 20th century. So you should check his music if you're not super familiar with this beautiful music. Well, so when I was preparing this talk, I was like, okay, I have 25 minutes and I want to make sure people can understand a little bit of his language, of his style, and can identify that in his music for the clarinet. Um, so I'm going to focus on prelude for clarinet solo, because most, most of his music for clarinet was written after this change in his style for the new, new romantic okay. So as I said before, Penderecki first work for clarinet, three miniatures for clarinet and piano was written in 1956, while he was a student at the Academy of Music in Krakow. It would take him 31 years to write again for, for the clarinet. Prelude, uh, written in 1987, is dedicated to British composer Paul Patterson as a gift for his 45th birthday. Patterson was, for many years, especially during the Cold War period, a champion of Polish composers, helping to spread their music in England through festivals and universities. So it's a very important figure for Polish composers. In 1987, Patterson was awarded with the Medal of Honor by the Polish Ministry of Culture. Um, Prelude was premiered in December 1st, in 1987, at the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester by clarinetist Joanna Payton. Nowadays, she's uh, currently at the city of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. Uh, the piece belongs to and represents a very special time in Penderak's career. During the 1980s, Penderak's new romantic and compositional style, or as he called synthesis, um, was established. Uh, it was also during the 1980s he began to write and accompany pieces which compared with his music, written until then was very unusual. So Prelude belongs to this period and where he wrote like Perislava for cello, a solo, Capriccio for tuba solo, and Cadenza for viola. And they all represent his works of the A's very well. Prelude quickly became part of the clarinet standard repertoire. The piece is short in length, between three and four minutes, depending on the performance and provides a number of challenging passages for the performer. Um, some of them are found in the way the clarinet range is used. The composer relies on the whole range of the clarinet, from lower E to altissimo C. Um, there are quick transitions between registers and explore extens extensive sound colors and legato playing. So if you planning to play this music or use this music in your studio it should be a really college level piece and the clarinet has to have the whole range of the instrument um, as i said before prelude is a mature work in its language as pendrax said for new romantic um, i want to everybody can understand the pillars of his new romantic period and where most of our music is based, right? And there are three elements that are very important in his music that we need to be aware of it. It's his intervallic content, form, and rhythmic cells. One of the most important elements found in Pendrax's music during this period is his use of form main intervals to build his melodic content. Uh, they are minor second, minor third, triton, and major sevens. Uh, scholar Scott Murph has come to the same conclusion that I, that these intervals, especially semitone and triton, are central to Penderecki's music. Murph, in his article, A Model of Melodic Expectation for Some New Romantic Music of Penderecki, says, and I quote, with the arrival of Penderecki in the Romantic period, however, interval class concentration become, sorry, interval class concentration becomes even more distinct. His melodies now strongly gravitate towards semitone and tritones interval classes. And if you heard his music, if you heard 
prelude if you listen to the planet quartet or perislava and which i'm, I'm going to show a little bit of some examples here you will understand this you understand how uh his music is really based on those um intervals take a moment and just look the the opening statement of prelude if you're not so familiar but and see the relation of the intervals there all right so when we investigate the first three music steps of prelude they appear very simplistic however they fully represent Penderecki's new romantic style and compositional technique in the opening statement of the piece we find features of melody building interval phrase structures that are the basis of the composer's style um, as you can see here another peculiar characteristic of Penderecki's music is establishing a strong tonal style. His music maintains certain elements of tonal music, as he confirmed in an interview for Roy Robson, in which he states, and I quote, I don't think that there is tonality in my last music. There are some elements of tonality, but it's not something which I can call tonality because there is no relation between the chords. I'm using tonal style. Although Penderecki does not work with tonality in the common practice, nonetheless, his melodic organization creates familiar parallels for the listener and performer. Uh, Murph explains this particular similarity saying, Penderecki, and I quote, Penderecki revisits many, many aspects of 19th century style in New Romantic music. He slides common practice tonality by not meeting a great majority of the expectations brought a tonal ear. However, while not create expectations that imitate those of tonality, nonetheless, it creates expectations specifically with the domain of pitch class that are analogous to and potentially standing in for tonality. And again, go back and listen the music and you find those connections you you hear you hear, you're gonna catch that the other authors also have discussed the stone aspects in Penderat's music dominique diorio refers to it as embedded tonality he says in and i quote in saint luke action and uh, there are three specific indicators of this tonality pedal tone out of voice frame and the presence of series of pitches that imply a diatonic collection. Two of these indicators, a pedal tone and the existence of a diatonic collections, are present not only in prelude but also in much of his music from the New Roman period, include, including Perislava. And here I want to show you um, this: the first opening, first three staff opening of Perislava and you can see the similarities and right? this idea that you keep one note and just can't sustain you go away but you come back to that note that creates this strong tone of centricity and uh, this tone of style and pedal tone you also can see the inter intervallic content in Perislava it's very similar to to the clarinet the same tone, same tone, the tritone, the minor thirds are very constant in the music. Okay. The second element I want to talk about his music that can be really helpful for us understand and find a, a knowledgeable way to perform his music is form. Uh, he has a careful and consistent consistent scheme for structuring the opening statements of his music. For example, although the text in Paris Lava is busier than in Prelude, it is still possible to find the same arch line structure. Penderecki begins both pieces by building the texture slowly and then return to the same material as heard at the beginning. And again, there's a very clear way to begin his music. Listen to the viola concerto, the flute concerto that he wrote in during the 90s, and the quartet is pretty much the same opening, same concept of opening. 
uh, this base because Penderatsky comes from a compositional tradition that values form and structure. In his interest, is, and his interest is connect to a tradition approach based on the psychologic and perception of music form. Uh, the other Polish composer, very important for us, Luto Sławski, um, in conversation with Charles Bodman Ray, he explains this concept. He says, and I quote, the psychological factor in perceiving a form, to my mind, it is much more to the point, to the thread perception of music, to the perception of music psychologically, than just describing the sound phenomena and their order independently from the perception of them. Uh, he says, Malitsevsky, which was his professor, used four different words of character, introductory, narrative, transitional, and concluding. Only in the narrative is content, is content the most important thing to be perceived. While in all the other three roles of the given section, the form of the music is more important than content. Uh, so Pendrats come from this tradition. Although he not stood directly with Malisevsky, it is certain that his composition professor at Krakow Music Academy, Artur Malansky, was a student at Warsaw Conservatory and was exposed to this tradition. Pendrats himself in many interviews repeated emphasized the importance of form in his music. Recently, he stated, and I quote, for me, the most important element is the form, and it must be correct. Um, I start a music piece with the form, not the theme, but a graphic sketch of the whole piece, and only then I fill the blanks. Again, even though Prelude is a short piece, its form is evident, divided into four sections. Introduction, narrative, development, and conclusion. And again, this is a base for Penderetsk music. If you go to the Clarinet Quartet, you're gonna find this. Even in the big forms, even in the big piece like concertos or symphony, this idea of form is still very constant in his music. The last element that I wanna talk about is his rhythmic cells. Uh, Throughout his career, Penderetsk has chosen rhythmic cells and used them intensively. Although some of these rhythmic cells has changed through his career, they are consistent for a specific period of time. Compared prelude with other pieces from the 80s, we see these rhythmic cells being used constantly. Uh, and here, a couple of most important rhythmic cells was present during the 80s. And by that, I mean really the 80s. When he moved to the 90s, he chose different rhythmic cells. So some of these specific, the rising triplets, you are not find in the chamber music of him in the 90s. And these elements are very specific for the 80s. Uh, for the, the tremor figure, show on the slide on the slide is a common rhythmic figure used by the composer during the 80s as i said the tremolo does not work on as embellishment but it has a specific structural function it serves as a bridge for a new section in Perislava and cadence for viola of other pieces from the 80s they are there the same tremolo figure is found and have the same functions accelerates the melodic material to transition to a new section, which normally has more energy. Um, so again, are, they are not just like rhythmic cells, but they also work for the structure of the piece. They have functions for that structure. Uh, this piece, you, this tremolo, you're gonna find in Prelude, you're gonna find in Paris level, for now, as we can see, really leading to a new section. Sometimes a small section, but leads to a new section as well. Uh, another important one that I want to point out in this example 
is the rising triplets, which would be this one. During the 1980s, they were an integral part of the Pendrax music, and both excerpts the rising triplets works as transition function. So in Prelude, in Prislava and Cadenza, which I don't have the example here, they serve for that. The composer used them as a tool to lead to the climax point of the piece. Additionally, it also marks a dividing point in the piece. Immediately after reaching that point, there is a transition going back to the conclusion of the piece, uh, which normally he used like the first thematic material. So he used this rising triplets to really make a transition to the conclusion part, to the last part of the piece. And normally, after this, we reach the highest point, loudest point of the piece, or the really the climax of the piece. Okay, I know this is very rushed, but I want to re just remind you: if you're gonna play his music from the 1980s towards, like the quartet, the prelude, all the other pieces, these elements are crucial to understand his music. Um, before I leave. I just want to point out some of the conclusions and I hope you can go back and check them like by using prelude as a case study and going through some of the elements that make Spenderax music so particular. I hope in the future you can make knowledgeable decisions regarding the interpretations of his work. Um, we find in his music a clear use of certain intervals. These intervals are the base of the melodic content in Penderatsky music for his new romantic composition period. By knowing his compositional lineage, we can understand the composer's view and concepts relating to the, his musical structure and form, concepts that he retained throughout his career. One of the conclusions found in, in this study about Penderat's music is the composer's consistency throughout the years. At first, this statement seems inaccurate as the composer went through different compositional phase. However, the research proves us different. Besides a short period in the beginning of his career where he explored sonorism and gained international recognition, his music since St. Luke's Passion has shown elements that were present in his music throughout through the end of his life. This consistency is represented in three pillars, intervallic content, form, and rhythmic cells. And for us performers, in order to interpret the music of the composer accordingly, we must be aware of these elements. Okay, uh, with this, I really finish. I wanna thank you again, you all for listening. If you're listening to this on YouTube, thanks so much for your time, thanks so much the organization of Clarinet Fest for putting this festival together. And uh, if you have any question, maybe, let me see, there's a question in the chat. Yeah, if you can have any question, you can ask now, or you can send me an email as well. Here's my contact information. If you have any question in the future, even through the YouTube, just send me an email or find me online. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much.